I feel like I should do something here, and I feel like this is important. I feel like people need to make sure they learn the right lesson. And so, in the most basic possible way, I'm going to try to explain why you don't ever shut down an economy, ever. Never. It's not that I don't think we should shut down an economy because COVID wasn't dangerous enough. It's that you don't ever point your finger at your economy and say, stop, ever. Things may shut it down, things outside of your control, things may shut down parts of it, but you don't ever load the gun and fire a bullet into your own economic head, ever. And so allow me to explain. We have a $20 trillion economy. $20 trillion. That number is so big, human minds can't even comprehend it. I certainly can't. But let's set aside this whole huge economy thing. It gets too big. It's too complicated. I want you to picture just a, a store, a restaurant, a sandwich shop. A couple owns and operates a little sandwich shop in a town near you. They make delicious little hot melty sandwiches, but that's not important for our time. They have this sandwich shop. And let's say you point to that couple and you say, what was that word they used? You're non-essential? Let's say you decide, as a governor, as a mayor, as a public health official, hey, mom, pop, shut her down. You're not essential. Sorry, you're not Walmart. And let's say you force them to shut down. Okay, well, what goes into a shop? A shop has what? A shop has employees. They would have employees. Hey, Charlie, sorry, don't come into work. Sarah, nope, can't come into work. We're shut down. Oh, Bill, don't come into work. Up there. Okay, so already you've separated those employees out. The employees themselves, they still have to pay the bills, right? They have their own bills, so they either need to go find a job where they're not shut down or they have to file for unemployment. That's just the employees. The rent. You, mom and pop, you're not made of money. You rent out a little, little place in a shopping center. You have to pay that rent. The landowner needs you to pay that rent. But if you can't pay the rent, then that goes to the landowner. But even if you can pay the rent, you don't have money coming in. Now your money's going down. Oh, just stay with me here. What else do you need for a sandwich shop? Food, right? We got to have our pastrami in from this guy. Hey, get our pepperoni guy on the line. Where are we getting mozzarella from? Hey, we're out of mayonnaise. We got to have, got to have fresh food shipments. Now, all of a sudden, you're calling your pepperoni guy. Hey, Pedro, don't bring the pepperoni. Hey, uh, Bob, Bob, cancel the pastrami order. Oh, no, postpone it. I think just two weeks, but I don't know. I'm going to wait and see. This is one little sandwich shop. Now, maybe the pepperoni guy, maybe he finds a new client because he can't afford to have you buying it and then not buying it. Maybe he reduces his supply because you're not buying it. And next time you call him, you don't have a pepperoni guy anymore. Maybe all of a sudden your mayonnaise guy, he gave you the last glut of his mayonnaise and then he's shutting down. Now you're This is one little mom and pop shop. Now expand that to a $20 trillion economy where everything works together. And they don't work together because they're all friends, obviously. Everything works together because everyone has learned how to run their own little portion of it. And so when you have jackass politicians and public health officials that say, stop, stop, pause, go home, you're not essential. Hey, shut down. Oh, that's dangerous. If it saves one life. And then in response to doing that to the economy, you walk up to the money printing machine and you print trillions of dollars and just take them in gobs and then you just start chucking them at the economy. Hey, another trillion here. Let's, let's get another trillion and get some trillions in there. What do you think you're going to get? You're going to end up a couple years later with 8.5% inflation and people can't afford a dozen eggs. And I'm sick and tired of watching everyone today put on their partisan hat and blame Joe Biden. Yes, Joe Biden sucks. Joe Biden made it worse. He's a complete disaster. This inflation is not Joe Biden's fault. And if we're going to take that lesson from this, if that's the lesson you learned today when you looked at these inflation numbers and you said, what, Joe Biden? The problem is you're going to do it again. Now, that's the only lesson we learn. We're going to do it again. You remember, remember my story in the beginning? If the only lesson I learned was to hold the matches tighter, then I'm going to go get blasted on an empty stomach full of whiskey again and do something else dumb because I didn't learn the right lessons the first time. 
Let's make sure we learn the right lessons. You're mad about today? I've got bad news about today. We're still on the 2020 idiocy portion of this pain. We haven't even gotten to 2021 yet. It takes that long for it to kick its way down the economy. These things are true. These things happen. Now let's move on to talk about Joe Biden and how disgusting these people are when it comes to this stuff. Look, you know I'm a bad person. Everyone knows that. Right? You're probably spitting mad at me right now. It's fine. Don't care. But I can't relate to these people who look at everyone suffering and don't feel any empathy to them at all. The Biden administration, I mean, they are, it is the presidency, right? It is the commander in chief. They are the top executive in the country, top elected official in America. And so they're citizens, they're suffering. They're out there right now, they're suffering. People are watching their standard of living freefall right before their eyes. And the Biden administration, their first instinct is to slap a label on the suffering so they don't get blamed for the suffering? This Putin price hike thing is sick. So because of the actions we've taken to address uh, Putin, the Putin price hike, we are in a better place than we were last month. Right now, um, and again, part of that justice is lowering cost. Right now, of course, we have the Putin price hike at, at the pump. And we're going to make sure that the full story is told both as it relates to Putin's price hike. I'm going to do everything I can to minimize Putin's price hike here at home. How gross is that? Your first instinct isn't to help. It isn't to do something about it. Your first thing you do is you gather all your staffers around. Hey, everyone get around the table. Hey, what label do we put on this so they don't blame us? That is so gross. I mean, I realize that's politics, but that is so gross. 66% of Americans have said they've incurred hardship over this. Two thirds of your country is in pain and you're worried about which label to put on it?